Hi guys, and welcome to a new episode of the Loan Shark podcast. Today I would like to talk about smart financial goals. Smart is always the meaning of a clever and thoughtful way to achieve something, as a lot of people, also including me, fail to achieve their financial goals, I wanted to change it from my perspective some time ago. Now it is the time to plan again for 2021 in a detailed way, wherefore I was researching the web again for some content. I want to present you what I have found out and which way it affected my goal planning. Honestly, I mostly stumbled through my financial life. I had always been someone with a good salary, already starting at the age of 12 but I was never able to save it as a small fortune for myself. Turning into my 30s, I had a good selling online webshop, which I hoped to be the turning point. But it was not. It even turns out to be more or less a nightmare. My biggest fail with financial things so far. After slowly recovering from this impact, it was the first time back in 2015 I set a financial goal. Looking back, my way has not always been fun but worth any moment. Money will affect your life anyway. In 2015, money was very present for me. Nearly everything in my life was just spinning around this topic. That was mainly because there was a huge amount of debt out of my business with which I failed. I have never had the situation like Dwayne The Rock Johnson is quoted with when he said he had just seven bucks in this pocket and no idea how to survive the next day. No, in comparison to others, I was still able to live on qu in a quite comfortable way. But, and that was my biggest point here, money dominated my life. I was thinking about it nearly every second. How will I be able to pay the debt? How long will it last to be debt-free? And what will happen if another financial surprise will come around the corner, which I did not expect it? I was quite dependent on a lot of things. I was bound to my salary to make regular down payments on my debts. Additionally, I tried everything to earn and or receive money to make an extra payment on my credit. That was, on the one hand, fun, as I was able to see the progress with the smaller debt sum. But on the other hand, I worked for someone else and increased working for another one to pay it to the bank. Since 2017, I'm debt free. I already started investing into P2P lending and ETFs in 2016, but those savings were quite small. But it was my personal formula to overcome the moment when I was debt-free and not to know what to do next with my money. And this was the time when I made my first financial goal planning. I was planning my personal finances already before, but most of the money was used to pay down the debts. So now, it was the first time I was able to make real savings and to really work on my wealth. Looking on my net assets was ways more motivating. Until 2017, my financial situation was mainly influenced by the credit. But after paying them off, I felt the need to work on improving my personal wealth. It was a time, and still is, where I was reading a lot about financial stuff to improve my knowledge about it. And exactly at that time, I first met the idea of smart financial goals. No more debt planning, but just saving into my own pocket. That was a great feeling. As you guys maybe know, I love to plan. My whole life is more or less planned in an Excel sheet. And it is getting bigger every year, when I try to improve my planning and as well my results. But that's enough of the personal and theoretical stuff. Let's dig a little bit deeper into how to find smart financial goals. Everybody knows the SMART principle, but also financially? Somewhere most of us will heard of the SMART principle. It is a way to find a meaningful goal. When I choose a goal like making a lot of money, this might motivate me for a week or two, but afterwards will unfortunately fail as there is no specific goals to work on. What is supposed to be a lot of money? Let's ask your neighbor or Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Maybe your neighbor thinks of 100k, but Jeff Bezos is worth several billion of dollars. As you might see, the difference is pretty big. So SMART is the shortcut for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time limited. A goal has to be able to find answer to all of those aspects. A lot of money as a goal does not match anything from it 
whereas it might be legit to be a goal, but it is not a very good target. SMART is a system you are to plan any goal with. It is not specifically for financial targets. Usually it is used in projects, companies and stuff like that. But there is no restriction not to use it for your personal finances. As I am often working with this method in my daily job, I am quite familiar with describing and making goals based on this method. I just want to share a short thought about any point with you to give you an idea how to use it. When you already know the principle and how to use it for your smart financial goals, you might jump to the next headline. Specific goals have a good description. The first letter S is for specific. Finding a specific financial goal usually means you have to describe it with a figure or a number. A lot of money has no aspect of it, but for example 100k net assets or $200 per month. Find some way to put your target into numbers. Of course you might also use percentages like 20% of my income. Nevertheless, the specification has to make things that detailed that there is no room for discussions. Words like many, much or a lot of should not be included in the description. You have to describe your goal specifically to avoid any doubt or interpretation of it. $200 per month are exactly $200 per month, not $189. Easy as that. I'm always feeling pressure while describing my goals that way. Meanwhile, I'm fine with it, but putting your numbers down, whatever they are, makes your goals more real in my eyes. Measurable goals are easy to commit on. With finding your goals, you should always think about committing on them for the next period. Choosing a savings rate of $500 today, which you take down tomorrow, and raise next week is not really valuable. If your income is that volatile, you should maybe use percentages or a total sum. It is important that you are able to calculate the achievement, no one else. You are taking responsibility of your personal finances, whereas you are the one to rate your way. Therefore, you should be able to measure your target every period to see your progress. If you are on the line, that's fine. But getting off the track needs some readjustment to get back on the path again. So you need to be able to measure your goals at any time. Achievable. The sky is the limit. Usually this aspect is quite easy and you can make your tick here, especially with your financial aspects. There have been people into debt with billions of dollars but also with net assets of billion of dollars. So this is your room to find something. But there are things which are not achievable, like save 110% of my income. Of course you might get another job and earn a little extra, but you still earn 100% and will not be able to save more than that. Mainly this aspect is very easy financially seen, as there is just a very few things not of not being possible. Realistic quotation, whether your target is doable. Setting a target of saving 100k next year is okay as long as you are able to afford it. Earning just 2k over the month, you will not be able to make your saving as much as 100k. This is not realistic. Several people quoted that we overestimate what to achieve within one year, but underestimate what we are able to achieve within the next 10 years. If your target is to hit the 100k net asset, but do not know how to afford it, you might split the amount into pieces. Depending on your income, you might go for 10k per year, which is still $833 per month to save. After 10 years, you will hit your target. In the short run, this goal is not realistic, but in the long run, you will be able to hit it. The same is valid for your credit. Being in debt ain't bad but you should have a plan to work on your credit and pay it down. Instead of net assets, you might use debt payments here. The only thing which is bad to stay in debt or to take new credit for any expenses. Make your vision count and not anyone else's vision of earning interest from you. Time limited to avoid stretching. Just related to the last point, you should find a time limit to achieve your target. Creating a bigger vision beyond the next year will automatically give you this limit. Wanting 100k of savings within the next 10 years, you need to save 10k every year. This is your time limit. At the end of the next period, you have to have 10k on your account, no matter what.
those numbers do not necessarily go in one line as you might use the compound effect. For example, if you want to achieve the 100k net assets in 10 years, you have to find a way to make, for example, 6% per year. This might be an ETF, Bond or Go and Go, or wherever you will receive this interest. Go and Grow will pay you 6.75% of interest, wherewith your monthly savings rate is $589. Over the time, you just have to save about 70k as the other 30k to your target are interest payments. Daily, weekly and monthly smart financial goals. Setting a financial goal once a year is great, but you always have to track yourself. It does not make any sense to decide, I want to save 10k until the end of the year and look into your account after 364 days. It is important to track your achievement at least monthly. You also might track it weekly or daily, whatever fits best for you. Therefore, you need to break down your target into the right dimension. Tracking it every week means to divide your monthly goal by roughly 4. Coming back to your goal of 10k per year means a saving amount of $834 per month and 209 per week. You might also divide your annual goal by 52 to receive a better number as dividing the monthly amount by 4 will lead to an overachievement of nearby 9%, which ain't bad. But helping yourself and your discipline to stay on the track, it is always easier to take the lower number. From my personal point of view, you should make an appointment with your personal finances every period at a fixed time. That does not need much time, maybe 30 minutes. Every first of the next period, you should for example collect all data and check whether you achieved your monthly goal. This might lead to a surprise when you have not tracked it during the month, but that is up to you. Nevertheless, I highly recommend to make that date with yourself regularly anyway. It will give you an intention about the current situation. Additionally, you always have the chance to readjust your work. You should not skip the plan when you missed it once. Maybe you will be able to catch up the next month when the numbers overall are fine again. Maybe you are failing once, but avoid it for the next time. There is a quote from Churchill, I think, which says, No plan survives the first enemy contact. That does not mean your plan necessarily has to fail, but be prepared. Adjust your plan to the real-life conditions. Typically, there are just small parts of your plan which fail. Maybe you are not able to afford $834 savings per month, but $750. So your plan just fails at 12%, but not in total. Make yourself a plan how to go for the missing $84 next month. Find them as fast as possible to follow your target. If your goal was not realistic at that point, you might change it. If there is no opportunity to hit it. Failing once is not bad at all. But doing the mistake twice or more times would be bad. That means you are either planning unrealistic or not putting the work in, which is necessary. Whatever it is, you should locate the problem and solve it, just because you want to have 100k net assets that will not come from alone. It is you who is responsible to achieve the goal, no one else. So it is up to you to get shit done. Work with the vision of your smart financial goals. I started working with a vision back in 2016. Maybe my way out of the debt was my main target, but it was just one step. Several had to follow, and they did. But over the time, planning and sticking to your goals is a job. You have to remind yourself of it, and you have to put in the work. If it is easy to skip something, as you already achieved something. By the end of 2019 and in the beginning of 2020, I focused mainly on goals outside the financial area. And this led to a situation where I started to forget about my smart financial goals. I skipped one savings rate and I lowered the overall goal of my savings rate. And the worst thing, I skipped the tracking for several months. After the Covid crisis went over Europe, a lot of things were happening in the P2P lending area. This is why I luckily found my way back to my goals. My sabbatical during the summer was the again initial point of where I committed to my goals. Looking back at my tracking overview, my numbers increased again, which is not just due to the stock market performance. Reminding myself of my personal vision and my plan made me getting back on track. 
As I think it is quite usual to get off the track, it is important to find out about it as soon as possible. Maybe I would have not skipped my savings right when I made realize aware of the consequences to achieve my vision later. Personally, I have a vision, which is everything happening 10 years plus. Those things are quite bold in my life and are motivating me. Every year during my phase of planning, I am readjusting my plans below the vision. It still keeps to be the same, but as I move forward, my 10 and my 5 years goals are moving one step on. Usually that does not take that much time, as those targets are mainly bullet points on a list. But creating my one year plan for the next period is taking me a lot of time. In my eyes, this is essential, as those figures are what I have to work on from tomorrow. I do not know whether 10 or 5 years are right. In my company, we are working with a 7 and 3 years model. Does not feel wrong either. I guess the right period for you is what you feel comfortable with. The main point here is to have a goal for the next 3 to 5 years and another for the next 7 to 10 years. Those have to fit into your vision to make sure you're working on it. Make your smart financial goals 100% happen. However your plan is, it is you to make things happen. You have to choose your goals a bit beyond your comfort zone and your abilities, but not that far away to scare the hell out of you. If you are able to find a goal in that small area motivating you most, you will be able to achieve it. In my eyes, one of the key factors to achieve your target is to track your way. Especially monthly or weekly goals are something you will be able to track with a very small amount of time. And you will find out very fast when things are not running like you planned them to. You will be able to adjust your path and go into it a better way next week. My personal smart financial goals. When planning the next year, I look at several areas of my life. Finances, family, fitness, side business and passion. For every one of them, I make one or two targets. This time I decided to increase my passive income. Maybe you remember that my bigger target is to reach financial freedom. For me, this is an amount of 5k monthly coming from anywhere. Passive income is capital and interest gains for me, but also other projects like audiobooks or books. If you follow my reports, the average passive gain in 2020 was somewhere around 65 to 70 euro. That is quite far away from my target. But as I stopped most of my income producing side business activities by the beginning of 2020, it is the logical outcome. However, I do not want to think about the why, but look into the future. Passive income is supposed to be paid independent from your work. So writing a book is work, but the sales afterwards are mostly independent from that. Therefore, I choose the goal to be 1000 euros monthly from passive income sources. Already, there are 65 euros from P2P lending and some more from dividend shares and ETFs. But for me, gaining another 900 euros until the end of 2021 is a huge challenge. I know people who already achieved it, so the goal is smart. Specific, 1000 euro monthly from passive income sources. Measurable, it is measurable any time I want to. Achievable, yes, I personally know several persons who achieved it. Realistic, another yes as I have to focus on it. Time limited? To be honest, the target is hit when I achieve the amount during December 2021. So it is absolutely doable for me and I will report about it within my report every month. Currently I do not want to restrict the goal more to its pieces like the share of P2P landing for example. I do not know which setting I will use. Time and the next month will show and for me it is more important to get things going as soon as possible. So what are your smart financial goals for the next year? Comment them below and let's get in contact. See you again at the next episode from the Loan Shark podcast. Bye bye.